In the late 1800s, Dr. Wilhelm Conrad Drawinchen, a German scientist and mathematician, studied at the Polytechnic Institute in Zurich. He was appointed to the faculty of the University of Würzburg and was the director of the Physical Institute at the time of his discovery. As a teacher and researcher, his academic interest was the conduction of high-voltage electricity through low vacuum tubes. A low vacuum tube is simply a glass tube that has had some of the air evacuated from it. The specific type of tube that Rowan Chen was working with was called a crook tube. Upon in his work, on November 8, 1895, Rowan Chen prepared his research apparatus for the next experimental session be conducted. When he would return to his workplace, he darkened his laboratory to observe the electrical glow cathode rays that occurred when the tube was energized. The glow from the tube would indicate that the tube was receiving electricity and was ready for the next experiment. On this day, Rowan Chen covered his tube with black cardboard and again electrified the tube. By chance, he noticed a faint glow coming from some material located several feet away from his electrified tube. The source was a piece of paper coated with barium platinum, not believing that the cathode rays could reach that far from the tube. Rowan Chen repeated the experiment. Each time Romichin energized his tube, he observed this glow coming from the barium platinum coated paper. He understood the energy emanating from his tube was causing this paper to produce light or to fluoresce. Fluorescence refers to the instantaneous production of life resulting of the interaction of some type of energy. This is how Rowan Chen first noticed there was a different type of radiation being produced from the Crookes tube. Rowan Chin was understandably excited about his apparent discovery, but he was also cautious not to make any earlier assumptions about what he had observed. Ranjin spent the next several weeks working feverishly in his laboratory to investigate as many properties of this energy as he could. He noticed that when he placed his hands between the energized tube and the barium platinum coated paper, he could see the bones of his hand glowing on the paper with this fluoroscopic image moving as he moved his hand. Curious about this, he called to his wife Berta and said, let me show you what I am doing because no one is going to believe that.
their time. I am going to show you because no one going to believe this. Berta, can you place your hand on the tree? Then he placed his wife's hand under the tube and produced a static image of her hand using a 15-minute exposure. Upon seeing the image of the bones in her hand, she is reputed to have said, have sent my own date. In those days, people only saw a skeleton after someone had died. The idea of seeing part of the body on an image of a living person was beyond anyone's imagination. This became the world's first radiograph. In December 1895, after much study, Rowenchen decided his investigation of this energy were complete enough to inform his physicist college of what he now believed to be a discovery of a new form of energy. He called this energy X-rays, with the X representing the mathematical symbol of the unknown. Rowenchen viewed this discovery as an important, but he also viewed it as one of primarily academic interest. His interest was in the X-ray itself as a form of energy, not in the possible practical uses of it. Runchen's discovery was lauded as one of great significant science and medicine. For his efforts and discoveries in 1901, the Runchen reserved the first Nobel Prize present for physics. The branch of medicine that was concerned with using X-rays was called Runchenology. A unit of radiation exposure was called the Runchen and X-rays were in the early days often referred to as Rowenchen race. Within a few weeks, the world changed. The legacy left by Rowenchen can be found throughout medicine in plain film, x-rays, and complex CD scans, and all the way, the x-rays from across the universe all from a discovery which happened by accident.